legal consequences for his fumbling attempts at courtship. Cannibalism is a regular part of tarantula life. One reason why these spiders live solitary lives. But tarantulas are not always their own worst enemies. There are other predators to watch out for. Like the kawati. This relative of the raccoon lives in South and Central America. It uses its long, flexible snout to root for grubs and other edibles. It's found what it's looking for. What's needed now are tactics. The scraping and scratching panics the inhabitant and drives it outside. But the veteran hunter refrains from striking it immediately. The prey is instead chased until it tires. The coati cautiously paws at the spider, hoping to avoid its painful fangs. The exhausted tarantula is finally crushed to death. For the kawati, the eight-legged prey is a delicacy. Spiders are nourishing. Everything is consumed, down to the last leg. Despite the odds, the enemies, the inhospitable environment, tarantulas still manage to thrive in the desert. In 1996, a new desert species was discovered in Mexico. It looks rather inconspicuous, but that goes only for the males. The females, on the other hand, look like desert peacocks. These gender-specific colorings are actually rare among tarantulas. Like all male spiders, the main goal of this one is to lure the female from her burrow to mate. In this case, he's lucky. She seems to respond. After gingerly securing her fangs, he drums the underside of her abdomen. He then inseminates her using the hooks at the ends of his two front legs. Unfortunately, this is the end of the road for him. Even if she decides not to eat him, he has only a few months left to live anyway. Males die soon after they reach sexual maturity, after age eight or so. But the females can live 20, even 30 years. During her life, the female will mate many times to ensure many batches of eggs. Several weeks to months after mating, she begins to lay her eggs. Hundreds of them. They land softly on a bed of silk that she's made. As she presses out the eggs, she also releases the male's sperm, which she had kept stored in special organs. Only now are the eggs finally fertilized. Immediately after the eggs are laid, the tarantula lines the entire nursery with protective silk. The eggs eventually disappear underneath a cocoon. 
a giant silk egg, which the female guards jealously. On occasion, the expectant mother will leave her burrow for a short time. But the cocoon goes with her. After about six weeks, the eggs have developed substantially. the spiderlings emerge. These tiny young molt at least once while still inside their silk cocoon. Their color and texture changes. Then they break out of their shell. Fully developed, but still small. Even smaller than a housefly. Young tarantulas are left to their own devices from the first moments of their lives. Although they do stay in their mother's vicinity for a few hours, they can no longer expect her to care for them. And indeed, if they hang around too long, she'll probably eat them. Eventually, the newly spawned colony will break up, with each animal going its own way. But it's a perilous journey to adulthood. Enemies are everywhere. And many of these young spiders won't make it. Another hunter eyes the terrain. the chameleon. And of course, spiders need to watch out for their own kind. This one builds a trap door on top of its burrow. Then it lies in wait, picking up the most sensitive vibrations from above. Not every attempt is successful, but the trap door can be reset in a jiffy. And if at first you don't succeed, Surprise. For those that survive, they'll take their place in the natural order and play an important role in controlling the insect population. Meanwhile, they'll leave us alone. So why not return the favor? Why not follow the old adage, if you wish to live and thrive, let a spider run alive. 接下来,重回四百年前的一场血腥大屠杀,寻找一个消失的神秘部落,中国玄关之谜,接着播出。